Hello, welcome on in. Are you guys ready for some chaos head? It's been it's been a hot minute. Um God, do I remember what the skip button even is anymore? I don't think I do, actually. <laughs> I think I forgot. Never? Oh come on, you had multiple weeks to mentally prepare this time, spooky. But um this time we'll be Going for Yua, which will be interesting. I put it lightly. I do remember the buttons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. That wasn't you. Right. Last time I said that, like, I thought it was, like, different every single time, but no, it only changed between, like, the first time and then this time. Or the first playthrough and then the following endings is when it changed, because, like, the first playthrough, it was that first, it was crucified, but then this one was the pregnant body, and so on and so forth. I don't know why I thought when we were doing the other ending that it was different, but no. I'm just silly. Now, isn't this fun? Just skipping through the game. I mean, isn't it great that I'm not too sick to stream this? Isn't that cool? I think I like that. Um. Okay. I was gonna be like, wait a minute, what if that was the thing that I had to, um, like, have a specific delusion with for Yua, but, like, Yua's supposed to be neutral anyway, so even if it was, we're fine. Um, it was just a coincidence. No. I'm hallucinating. No. Whoever did it is inside this school. Yes. They're taunting me. Yes. I want to erase it now. Yes. Nah. Dosanda. Oh. I already got the achievement for uh, discovering you a story, so I guess that was the delusion. <laughs> Damn, that's early. Good thing that it worked out. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll try to be more careful in the future. I think that's the only one. That, that's for that delusion, though. Yeah. Or no. Oh, Rimi is also going to be for that one, too. <clears throat> Actually. Okay. Well, when we do Rimi, I need to make sure I'm paying the fuck attention, then. Because, yeah. Well, we're already on Yuva's track, but the route doesn't officially start till Chapter 7. So we're going to have a lot of skipping to do, but there will be... Some more Yua sprinkled in as a result. So there still be some new stuff up until then. Not much, but stuff. Um. 
<clears throat> Hello, what's gotten into you? Misumi walked up to me and grabbed me by the shoulders to shake me. Are you listening? Bye. Yo, talk. <laughs> Every word in that phrase was commonly used. It was just some stupid scribbling. I tried to tell myself that, but I started to feel really creeped out. In the end, I quickly erased them, hoping that nobody was watching me. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Marry me. Shibuya Station in the early morning has a very different face than it does during the day. There were very few teenagers, it was mostly company men and women in suits, packing the train cars full as they headed from the station to their destinations. Somehow, they seemed slow with exhaustion and in a hurry all at once. And the students looked the same way. But there weren't that many Suyume Academy students around. To get to Suyume from the station, you had to walk for at least 20 minutes. You had to climb up Dogenzaka Hill too. Most UMA students who used the trains got off at Jinsen Station, the station nearest the school. Yuakusunoki, however, always chose to walk to school from Shibuya Station. She had to wake up a little early to do it, but she didn't mind. Shibuya Station was jam-packed with people, but once you went up Dogenzaka Hill, there weren't nearly as many pedestrians. You enjoyed walking in the fresh morning air. She also liked to watch the news on big televisions outside Shibuya Station. And this morning, like always, she was looking up at the big O front TV as she waited for the signal to change. <laughs> she gasped, shocked. Text ran from right to left across the bottom of the screen. When she read the text, third, ge the, 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 third new generation case, the first thing she thought of was a boy's face. She never met the boy. Never talked to him. <laughs> never talked to him. She just seen his face yesterday morning, but that was more than enough for her to be sure that he was behind the new gen killings. You are you good? Oh, I saw Takumi's face once in the morning. He's the killer. Really? She could remember what had happened clearly. Okay. It was at 7 a.m. on the previous day, inside Tsuyame's academy school building. No one else had arrived at school yet, and Yuma was hurrying through the empty hallways. She had a stern look on her face, and her eyes were locked dead ahead. There was no hesitation in her stride. She stopped in front of a classroom. Outside of it was a sign reading, 2C. She looked up at it once, and went inside without even pausing for a moment. It wasn't her class. She was a third year student, and normally, she'd have no reason to go inside this classroom. Normally, yes. But today, she had a reason. She slowly looked around the empty class, the empty room, and then headed to the blackboard. She looked at the red, yellow, and white pieces of chalk for a moment, before settling on a brand new piece of white chalk. Then, she began to write something on the blackboard, taking care to make her handwriting look a little worse than it actually was. Uh, so then Takumi's reaction to it... Okay. <clears throat> His eyes are those. She whispered the words she'd written aloud. She set the chalk down and glanced around the classroom again. How will react, I wonder. She whispered to no one in particular. Will you not react at all? Will you be surprised? If you panic and try to erase it, that means... She spoke softly, even though the classroom was empty. That means you're the killer. I'll be watching in secret. I'll be watching. You don't know my face at all, but I know you. I know you. I know your face. I know you. And that's why I'll be watching. 
I'll be watching to see how you react when you see what's on the blackboard. I'll be watching very carefully. Do you hear me? Takumi Nishijo. She bit tightly down on her lip. After that, she killed time on the roof until it was time for the students of TUC to come to school. Ten minutes before homeroom, she went to the locker in front of class 2C and watched carefully to see if anyone reacted to the whose eyes are those that she drew in. And, just as she expected, she saw a boy with a frightened look on his face, trying desperately to erase the words. She confirmed later that it was, in fact, Takumi Nishijo. I know you. I know. It's you. It has to be you. Her words were drowned out by an electronic sound that had been modeled after the chirping of pigeons. The crosswalk lights at Scramble Crossing had turned green. The waves of people began to surge forward once more. But Yua just stood there, unconcerned with the traffic she was blocking, looking up at the text on the huge TV above her. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. I bought that soda with my own money. That's not new. I guess I just got a little stuff as a treat. You don't think that particular crosswalk sound was so international? Uh, yeah. I honestly was- didn't know that it was, like, modeled after pigeons. I'm not surprised, but I don't know that. I wonder what set off you to suspect how could be so early though to like set up the whose eyes are those in the classroom? Hmm. And stream lag is so bad for you, spooky, my goodness. Oh, new information. Yua Kusunoki had a twin sister, one born right after her. But she died a month ago. It was suicide. A twin sister was, in a lot of ways, a part of yourself. The two of them were far closer than most siblings. She meant everything to Yua, but once she died, it was like losing half of herself. When she heard the news, she'd cried and cried. She laid down on the bed in her younger sister's room looking for any trace of the girl who'd lived there just the day before. And why did she die? Yua couldn't come up with a single reason. It wasn't suicide. His sister would never do that. Somebody had killed her. As her sadness deepened, she became more and more sure of it. Maybe there was a message from her sister somewhere that she hadn't noticed? Feeling a little guilty, she began to look through her sister's things. She found a diary. And in it were the words. Whose eyes are those? Hmm. <coughs> it was an SOS from her sister. It had to be. But she had no idea what it meant. In desperation, she decided to search for it on the internet. That led her to something. The National Elementary School Essay Contest. Ah, I see. I see what's happening here. It was something the Ministry of Culture had held six years ago. The winning essay was titled, Whose Eyes Are Those? That's the winning essay? Jeez. <laughs> Maybe armpits? <laughs> Hello? Crunchy iron plate. And now, and now I need to read all of these. Okay. So the first one's the crow's hair. Tea thinner. Vinyl letterpress. 
the caterpillar and the vampire. Whose eyes are those, of course? Maybe armpits. Crunchy iron plate. Custer Rede? I don't know that word. Uh. Shinjiol? It's kind of hard to read that behind the text box. Protein intake. Not like protein, like what you would consume, but like protein. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, Maybe it's not that weird that Takumi's essay won then. Hmm. The author's name is written on the page too. Takumi Nichijo. He would have been in fifth grade at the time. But she couldn't imagine what the relationship between her sister and this Takumi Nishijo was. It seemed to be a dead end. Her chance to investigate further came suddenly. Yu would always pass by Shota Park on her way to school. Twice a week or so, she'd see a lonely looking boy eating a pastry while sitting on a park bench. As she looked at him sitting there, forlorn, for some reason, he began to intrigue her. One day, she was going to school alongside a classmate she happened to run into at the station. She saw him on the bench in his usual spot. When her classmates saw her interest in him, this is what she said. Nishijo, Nishijo, one of the second year students. My little brother's in his class. He's a creepy otaku, and he hikikomori, he says. Kusunoki, you should just forget about him. Nishijo. Nishijo was a very unusual name. This couldn't be a coincidence. Yo quickly got her hands on the student roster for the second year classes. She found what she was looking for. That name. Takumi Nishijo. But there was still a chance that it might be a different person who just happened to have the same name. So Yo decided to test him. Whose eyes are those? When she wrote those words on the blackboard, he seemed to panic. And it was right after that, when the crucified killing occurred, when someone on the net leaked a witness statement that a Suyume Academy student had been seen running from the scene. Yu was sure of it now. There was something suspicious about Takumi Nishijo. He might have been the one who killed her sister. Hmm. Well, that answered my question. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I do agree that Pigeon's good. I didn't respond to that because I was busy reading the new stuff. <laughs> Oh boy, this. Okay, so last time, I attempted to submit nothing, but then I never looked at the results, so I didn't get the achievement for it. So now we're going to submit absolutely nothing, and then we should get an achievement when we check that later. This is so exciting. It's just speedrunning a visual novel. I'm not sure there are any delusion triggers that we haven't seen the neutral Net. for yet, so this will probably be like the smoothest sailing. At least up until the route starts.
we any predictions chat for what's gonna happen because i i have no clue Yeah, fuck all idea too. Yeah, that's fair. Cause like I don't think Nanami's ending gave us even like the slightest idea of what to expect from all the other endings. Especially since um Nanami's ending was a chapter before everyone else too, so that doesn't help. But I am intrigued. And I think at least this will give us an idea of what to expect for everyone else except for Rimi. Because, like, Rimi is definitely going to be different. My body froze. No, I just got stuck. Okay. I'm not sure we'll get any more, like, extra moments from starting the U.S. route up until, like, her route officially starts at this point. I could be wrong, though. We. Maybe I wasn't sleepwalking. Maybe the person controlling me. Me who wasn't me. Another personality who isn't me. Okay, I'm pretty sure that was just a getting stuck on new content. The police. Another crazy chip. I still find it funny that I get stuck on that. The sword. Shut up, don't treat me like I'm the killer. Uh, it is nice to be back to Chaos Head, even if I haven't been doing much. Just been speedrunning for the most part. <laughs> Sometimes I was surprised at how overly friendly Rimi seemed. Yeah, that's fair.
What do you think of the new emote, by the way? The little bunny bun. Isn't it so cute? It's my new favorite thing ever. It's my pride and joy. Here we go. Oh, handy. I saw a sword. Yes. I saw a sword clearly. And also, yes. If I could move from here, I could go get it. No. I could see the sword someplace that wasn't here, too. No. Not actually a sword. Yes. And bad ending of world lead. Yay! <laughs> it's fucking Darth Spider. Okay, we're in chapter 7, so that means Yuva's route's gonna start here soon. Ish. I don't know at what point. Maybe the beds were all full because so many people were hurt in the earthquake yesterday. Maybe the beds in the mental ward had been the only ones open. Oh, if only. Or maybe they thought because I had... Blah, blah, blah. Or maybe they thought I had collapsed because of some mental disorder. Well, if they did, they weren't that far off. Oh, have we not done the normal? Yeah, I don't think we've done the neutral for this one. I'm starting to feel more and more depressed. Me. <coughs> I tried killing them all in my brain to see if it would make me feel better, but it didn't. It wasn't enough to avenge my humiliation. They were still looking at me too. Taunting me with voices so loud they echoed throughout the entire class. <laughs> okay, why haven't you killed yourself? Okay. Is it hard being alive? Not as to help you? <laughs> what ass is this? <laughs> I put my hands tight over my ears and tried my best to endure their taunts. I wanted to kill them. 
and I wanted to murder them all with my D-sword. Imagine my blade splitting open their heads, ripping out their hearts, and splitting their bodies in two. Die. 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 I didn't have a D-sword, but I could buy big kitchen knives anywhere. I wanted to stamp out their worthless maggot lives myself. Well then. Maybe my brain had been pushed so close to the brink that I had to make another personality to survive. Maybe I did have multiple personalities, like you said. Cause the P is really cause the P, Nora. I'm a different person than you. I'd heard once before that, normally, different personalities couldn't communicate with each other. Maybe I was the exception. Uh, <sighs> Because the P isn't you. I was getting so tired of this. Was I eventually going to start hearing the voices of other personalities too? Besides this obnoxious Kozapi one? Wow. How many personalities were inside me anyway? I read in some book that there was a patient with 24 personalities somewhere in America. And what was more? I didn't even know if my personality was the primary one. A different personality might be the actual owner of Takamimi Shijo's body. <sighs> Understandable, have a nice day, Kozupi. As I stood there in shock, the transfer student poked me. As she did, she tried to whisper something, but seemed to fail. Instead, she nervously raised her hand. Kozupi Kozupi is Kozupi, Nora! <laughs> huh? Kozupi is Kozupi. Also, Kozupi's name isn't transfer student. It's Kozue Orihara, Nora. Kozue Orihara. I vaguely remembered hearing the name a long time ago from Yusumi. Kozue. Kozue. Kozupi. No way. <laughs> So, you're sending this voice directly inside my head? She nodded again and again, as hard as she could. <coughs> Telepathy? Telepathy? I don't know how it works, Nora. But I can do it. That's impossible. <laughs> Poor Kozupi. Kozupi deserves better. Yeah, so, so... You're not, not, not worthless. <laughs> I don't mind it stopping on that one. That thing was too big to be swinging around indoors. There were other people around her too. If she hurt someone, it could be really bad. Watching her hold it made me feel like I was going to have a heart attack. Whether she knew of my worries or not, Kozupi lowered the blade from above her head and began to spin. She looked like she was having the time of her life. This is Kozupi's sword, okay? It beats up the bad people, Nora. I mean... Beats up... the bad people? Something about her words made my heart start beating faster. Something was wrong. So P is cute. Done. We'll be getting a Yase. Done for a second cause of P. Uh. I don't want it. She, she wasn't even slightly interested. What a rude woman. Turning down somebody's kind offer like that. Or was this just her being a soon today? It's not Moe if it's too if it's 3D, understand? Okay. Let's try this, Senna. 
If you can say the Shibuya words that we practice together, Takumi will give you the winning stick. I said I don't want it. Come on, hurry. The words you say when you're having a good time. And, like, so grody. Gag me with a spoon. Huh? What? Don't you like words? You're also like a decade out of date, too. Have the two of them been studying that? It was kind of cute in a way, but... We need to say them so we can fit in here in Shibuya. Come on, Sena. I can't. You can. I can't. Because <laughs> the piece silently stared at Sena with tears in her eyes. Even Sena couldn't resist that. <sighs> and, and like, so grody. Gag me with a spoon. <laughs> I Sena always sounds so awkward when she talks like that. Sena had started blushing and was turning away from me. I felt like I'd just seen something very rare and precious. This was the complete opposite of all the complicated theories she'd been spewing a moment ago. All hail Dure mode. I just see new possibilities in 3D girls. <laughs> Good job, Kuzipi. <laughs> As promised, I gave Sena that winning stick. She took it with less resistance than I'd been expecting. I'm not going to say thanks, okay? She very pointedly picked up her D-sword again and glared at me before looking back down at her feet. Why did she have to glare at me after I'd done something nice for her? Something with Sena was always such a pain. Why would she just stay in dure mode all day? <laughs> Amazing. We're in chapter 8. You was where I was supposed to start in chapter 7. What went wrong? Other than the fact that I didn't save, but that's a different problem. Because we shouldn't have gone into chapter 8 without starting Yua's route. Or... Is this Yua's route? Because this is claiming to be new, or is it stuck? Bon, you're late. I must say yelled as soon as he arrived. Bon shrugged and gave her a half-hearted smile as he walked over to her desk. He hadn't brought her any sweets today, a decision that he was beginning to regret. No, where's Suwa? Not working on his own today. So you're slacking off while the kid does all the work, huh? No, I'm working too, you know. I was up all night doing research, I'll have you know. I've learned a whole lot about teen what teenage girls are up to these days. <sighs> Not even sure what to say to that. So, if I'm here, that means that you managed to make contact with the kid? They're here now. <laughs> That's my Momo. Are they cute? Mosa gave the grinning bone a slap on the head. She put her wrist into it too, and it hurt pretty bad. Go up, you old pervert. <laughs> it was a joke, okay? Bon had asked Momo to say for her favor. He wanted to talk to somebody involved with the new giant cases directly, and asked Frigia to make it happen. His questions were, for the moment, I'm going to be directly linked to the police investigation. He couldn't talk to her in an official capacity. At least not without somehow getting the rest of the team involved. Hmm. 
Mose had a foot of her corner of the office, motioning for Bond to follow her. There was a small space there, surrounded by shelves lined with files. The space served as a meeting room for talking with clients. There were two sofas, each with room for two people, and both far too big for the cramped little area. When Bond followed Wamose inside, he saw a girl sitting there. She was wearing a CMA Academy uniform. Her shoulders were slumped, and she was looking down. She looked exhausted. Sorry for keeping you waiting. The girl looked up in surprise when Wamose spoke. The glasses fell forward a little, and she adjusted them with her fingers. Uh, yeah. No, no, I'm fine. She looked a little scared as she bowed shallowly to Bon. He was kind of hurt by this. Bon always tried his hardest to try and come off as unthreatening. He realized, though, that he still must be giving off the intimidating air of a professional police officer, though. It's something he would have to keep working on, he realized. You are Kusunoki, correct? Uh, hi. Okay. That is... I mean... Yeah, you can translate hi as okay, but that's not the correct way to respond to... Whatever. Translation errors. You're the twin sister of Mia. The deceased. Is that right? You have flinched a little before nodding. The first new junk case was the group dive. One of the victims who jumped was a girl named Mia Kusunoki. <laughs> Come on now, calm down a little. <laughs> Judging by this guy's look at my knowledge of anime, he's a detective. Or a hobo. Maybe both, to be honest. But, um, he... Yeah, he's a detective. Um... Like, works specifically with the police department, but obviously it's not in police officer garb, so. But well, come on in, Relix. How's it going? Come on now. Calm down a little. I'm not here to interrogate you. We're just having a little chat. Before I get to the point, can I ask you something? Oh, nice. How was the card tournament? I hope you had fun. Yua-chan wa... What are your thoughts about your sister's death? Man, you can't possibly expect her to. Pretty good, had some fun games. That's good. Sorry, sorry. It's just part of my job. Detect is one of the first things you lose as a police officer. And I'm just curious. The task force down at the station was uh, talking about it too. They said Mia Kusunoki's family was unusual. Ban! No, it's fine. Momose had almost leapt out of her chair at Ban's rude question, but Yua herself stopped her. I think it's strange myself. The five kids who died in the group dive had absolutely no reason to commit suicide. Their family and friends all said the same thing. Mia's family, however, was the sole exception. Bon took his fan out of his bum and began to wave it at his face. They didn't say a thing. It didn't make any kind of fuss. We were so quiet about it that it was strange, everyone said. Why do you think that was the case? And ever since Mia died, mom and dad have been weird. And there was pain in her voice. At first, on the day they heard Mia had died, they cried. Mom and dad looked like they were in a lot of pain. But the next morning, for some reason, they were happy and smiling. They were back to just how they'd been before Mia died. It only took a single day. I didn't understand. I thought that maybe the two of them were just trying to forget her. And then Dad was smiling, and he said, He said I don't even have a little sister. And when I showed them her clothes and shoes, I didn't phase them at all. 
he said they were all just extras that they bought for me. And then they just they started shutting off the news and ignoring the police. I'm trying to forget that Mia never existed. And so they're going to pretend you weren't twins? And that's why they started chasing off the police and telling them they only had one daughter. Me and I were identical twins. We were impossible to tell apart. But my parents hated her. She would always hide away her own feelings and put me first. As Yua talked, she remembered the memories of her old life. For example, one year when she was in elementary school, her parents had bought a present, a single giant stuffed bear. Yua was excited, but Mia said she didn't like stuffed animals and ignored it. Her parents had disliked how Mia refused to act like a little child should. Still, Yua quietly offered to share the stuffed animal with her, but Mia had refused. I don't need a stuffed animal. You can have it, was all she'd said. A month or so later, though, when Yua had gotten tired of the stuffed animal, she woke in late at night to see something surprising. Mia was holding the stuffed bear and talking to it with such a happy look on her face. Yua had never seen her sister look so happy. It was only then that Yua realized her sister was lying about not wanting the bear. She'd been lying so that her sister could have it all to herself. The next day, Yua looked under Mia's pillow and found a cute picture of a bear she'd drawn. Mia had been sleeping within her arms after Yua got tired of the stuffed bear. Things like that had happened over and over again for the last 18 years. It was always Yua who blew out the candles on the birthday cake. Mia would say, That's stupid. I'm not doing it. And her parents would get angry. Yua had made it into Suyume Academy, a private school, but Mia had deliberately behaved badly in class, lowering her grades and making sure she got sent to a public one. Her parents hadn't had the money to send both of them to private schools. No matter what Yua tried to do for Mia, Mia would always put her big sister first, even if it meant making other people hate her. In the end, it took advantage of Mia's uh, kindness and had all the fun while she suffered. Only after she had gone did I realize there was more I could have done for her. I really regret it. Now this has been new, but I haven't been able to skip through it. Hmm. I wish I could have died in her place. And then, not only that, her parents weren't even trying to forget about her. It's not fair. It's just too sad. That was all the talking she could do. She took off her glasses and put her hands over her eyes she began to cry. Mose sat next to her, kindly patting her on the back. So you has been investigating the case on her own, she says. To find out what exactly happened to Mia. That must have been difficult. She's found a name. Hmm. Mose looked over to Bon, still holding you up close. Takumi Nishijo. I see. Bond struck the stubble on his chin and leaned forward. I heard from one of the local detectives that there was a teenage girl who was running after Nishijo one day. Was that you? She nodded, looking like she was sorry. Interesting. I'd like to hear. I was going to say I'd like to hear more, but give me a second. Mon chuckled and bobbed his head at Yua and Momose. He'd been cut off by the sound of his phone, coming from within his suit pocket. He quickly took it out and looked at the LCD screen. It was showing Sua's name. Hello? What is it? It's happened. The seventh murder. Yeah, convenient that you would know, huh? Shut the fuck up, dog. God damn. What? 
So his voice was tense. Dog, like actually shut the fuck up. Bailey. 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 Bailey! Don't make me get up. You're not gonna like it if I get up. Bailey. Oh my god. Let's get three legs. Hang on. Jeez. So his voice was tense. Mark could hear the sound of other police officers frantically running around him. From the sound of it, Sue was at the station. The seventh new gen case. One's eyes went wide and he bit his lip. Uh, this is really not used. Three victims, all friends. All of them had their bodies sawed in half. The top halves and bottom halves are switched with one another and sewn together with monofilament. That's fishing wire. There are injuries on their faces that look like orders. Q, D, and M, right? Let's look at a message. Tokyo. Topsy found something. Bodies weren't cut in half with a solar blade. What do you mean? <coughs> Like by some kind of monster. Blah, 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 blah. This isn't new content. I don't. Okay, that's new. Yeah. By the time you have finished a conversation with Mose and Bon left Phrygia, the sky was dark. She told them everything she suspected about Tokami Nichijo, and showed them all the research she'd done. <laughs> Relix. A police detective and the head of a private investigation company. If the two of them could be persuaded, the police might go arrest Tokami Nichijo. Or at least, she'd hope so. Tokami Nichijo needed to be arrested. She knew how much she was suffering, so she wanted him to turn himself in. But since he wasn't willing to, she have to She'd have to get the police to arrest him. That had been what she'd thought anyway. But surprisingly, Bon had told her that Takumi Nishijo wasn't a suspect anymore. It was unbelievable, something she didn't want to accept. Why would they refuse to believe her theory? It was so clear that Takumi Nishijo was behind the murders. Yua bit her lip and headed toward the station at a fast pace. She needed to get home to do more research. She needed to find proof they couldn't ignore. Then she showed it to Bon and proved she was right. No, if it isn't to young Miss Kusunoki. Someone called her name out of nowhere. She jerked a little and then stopped moving. Shibuya is not safe these days. Girls, make sure you're not out alone at night. I mean, true. That's so real. Girls, make sure you're not out alone at night. Have a buddy. Buddy system. She remembered the teacher telling her that during homeroom and froze stiff. The man who called out to her was young and friendly looking. You're Yua, aren't you? Um... She recognized him from somewhere, but she couldn't remember where. Oh, you don't remember me? Huh? The name is Mamoru Suwa. look. He pulled out a police badge from his pocket. Just high enough for her and nobody else to see. Then he quickly put it away. And I went to your house after the group dive. You and I spoke for quite a bit. Hmm. So, sorry. I remember now. Uh, nice to meet you again. You were about to him. She'd been a mess after the incident. She didn't remember his face at all. But she did remember a detective who was nice enough to listen to everything she had to say. 
That was the conversation where she realized how bizarre her sister's death was. In that respect, she was grateful to him. You were just with Bon a moment ago, weren't you? Huh? You know Bon? Yeah, sure, we're both part of Section 1. He's my partner. So he's getting mad at me for something or another. Hang on a sec, I gotta blow my nose. Trying to breathe. Anyways. And he must have been really happy to talk to you, young girl. Alright, buddy. And don't tell him I told you this. But when he was talking about meeting you today, he had this look on his face like a perverted old man. <laughs> I wish I could have gone with him, but I couldn't get away from the investigation. Oh, right. Uh, have your parents been told yet? I assume they have. Or, um, maybe they haven't? I'm told what? No, oh, we found something we think was used by the killer in the group dive case. Huh? Really? Yo hadn't heard anything about this. She found herself edging closer to him. Eh. Yes. What, I guess what it is? The media has been talking about it all the time because of another case. So I bet you could if you tried. Get this. It's a dark spider helmet. Isn't it yours, Osuba? And the killer behind the group died murder was wearing it? Yup. There was that video that went online, right? He ran a bunch of analysis on it and found that out. Speaking of which, the Shibuya boy psychic thing also had a dark spider on it, didn't it? Takumi Shisho, what was that? The kid's name? Why would he have the same kind of dark spider helmet as the one used by the group dive killer? Fucking bastard. As she heard those words, black emotions welled up inside her. It was something like certainty now. Just a bit ago, Bonham and Mose had been telling her that her theory was wrong. The fact that they rejected only made her more certain now that this was the final piece of their puzzle. Anyway, I'm off to Fujia. See you around. You fucking... Mm. Fucker. <laughs> yeah. After he was finished talking, Sua waved and walked off. He was left alone. She stood there, unmoving, head slumped forward. It's him. She whispered softly, to no one in particular. He's the one. I knew it was him. It has to be him. I'm sure it's him. He killed my sister. He killed me. Man, I wish I knew who she was talking about. Hey, hey, Nightheart. I've been waiting. We got new nice guy. We got what? Too lazy to find a new gen, dude. New gen. New gen equals nice guy. New gen, NG, nice guy. Shouldn't be that hard to figure out. Anyway, it's here. The seventh murder. The seventh murder. Another one. Another new gen murder. How long was this going to keep happening? Will the next one be the one where they finally got me? Or the one after that? Anyway, had Grum gotten a job with the new gen advertising division or something? He was constantly telling me about them whenever one happened. Once again, he posted a bunch of links to news sites, too. This must have been his way of telling me to look at them. I clicked the link a bit down hard on my lip. Little cute puzzle. Hmm. 
Mm. This is a new John the Cops already. It's. At approximately 4.50 a.m. today, a newspaper delivery man found the bodies of three men hanging from a utility tower near the train tracks of Shibuya. <coughs> a police investigation revealed that the bodies belonged to three Shibuya residents, college student named Saburu Hanzawa, part-time worker named Joe Takagi, and Kohei Fujita, who was unemployed. All three had their bodies severed at the torso, and the top and bottom halves were stitched with another of the murdered men. Strange distinctive injuries were found on their foreheads, which the police believe may be a message from the killer. And Shibuya has suffered from a number of bizarre murders over the past two months, and authorities are treating this as another in the same series of incidents. The last video I saw showed the faces of the three murdered men. I recognized their faces. Oh, it, it's them. They, they mugged me yesterday. I gave them my wallet, but they still attacked me anyway. I passed out, and when I woke up, Kozupi was there. The three of them were covered in blood. I took my wallet out of my pocket and stared at it. When I'd woken up, Kozupi was holding my wallet. She'd given it back to me. Cause she'd be the one who... No, that wasn't right. When I'd seen them last, their faces were smashed up. And they were covered in blood, but they certainly weren't sliced in half. They'd been killed after Kozupi and I had left. Was this Shogun? Was he taunting me? Telling me that I was next. There was a chance that Shogun would come back. He seemed to be coming after me as some sort of game, which meant the next quest might start whenever he felt like it. That scared me. Rimi, help me. Where'd she gone? Wasn't she supposed to protect me? <laughs> Somebody was here. I looked at the clock on the computer. It was just after 8 in the evening. You could be coming at this hour. Rimi. It had to be Rimi. She'd finally come to save me. She said she'd stay with me. Of course she'd come. She'd certainly taken her time, though. I hurried to the door, feeling that salvation was at hand. I undid the padlock, locking the door from the inside, and then I flung open the door. Rimi! Ri I tried to say Rimi's name, but suddenly... Suddenly, hmm. But suddenly, somebody put a hand over my mouth. In the instant, I started to panic. I didn't even get to see who it was. I tried to knock the hand away. But before I could, they pressed their body weight against me, and I started to stagger backwards. I tried as hard as I could to stay standing. I fell on my hands about, trying to stay upright. I lowered my head and bit their hand as hard as I could. <laughs> Whoever they were, they weren't saying a word, and they kept trying to press themselves up against me. I was biting pretty hard, but their hand wasn't budging. They pushed me back and tripped me, and I fell, unable to stay upright anymore. I hit the back of my head hard and almost passed out. My vision was swimming, and I couldn't even tell what position I was lying on the floor in. They still had their hand up against my mouth. It was hard to breathe. As my mind started to slip into the darkness, I used all the energy I had to look up at the face of the person in front of me. <laughs> you, huh? That's right, I had forgotten about her. I have been so focused on Shogun that I had forgotten about her, his servant. Panic seized me. I struggled and tried as hard as I could to escape. But Yuba's whole body weight was on top of me, and I couldn't get up. A girl was pressing herself up against me, but there's no time to get horny over it. I didn't even have it in me to enjoy the feeling of her body. The only thing in my mind was an instinctive fear that if I didn't run, I'd be killed. There was a little trickle of blood falling from her hand where I'd bit her. 
but she was still pressing as hard as before. Her hands were incredibly strong. She was pressing my jaw as hard as she could, and even digging her nails into my cheek. I was hit by a stabbing pain. <laughs> Me too. I could hear her whisper between rapid breaths, and I shivered. I grabbed a tuft of her long hair and yanked it, trying to fight back. And she winced, but still didn't get off. With her open hand, she grabbed the hand I was using to pull her hair and dug her hands into it too. It hurt so bad I let go. When I did, she pinned my hand to the floor. It's you, isn't it? It's you! Her glasses had tilted slightly on the nose during her struggle. On her nose during her struggle. I could see tears in her eyes from when I pulled her hair. But her eyes were endlessly cold as she stared at me, just like I've showed her You... killed her. What was she talking about? Was she still saying I was the new gen killer? She didn't kill anybody. She was the one who was here to kill me. Staring back into her cold gaze was terrifying. I learned in the moment that you shouldn't lock eyes with crazy people. There are some eyes that just look abnormal. Insane. I looked away, praying to wake up from this nightmare, but... Don't look away. Her face got closer. I could feel her unsteady breathing on my cheeks. Look at me. Her breath was so hot. She was so close that even if I looked away, she'd still be in my field of vision. I thought about giving her a headbutt, but I was so pinned too tightly to try. I'll show you. I'll show you the you that you won't- that you don't know, mother. There's another you inside you. The DID. The Associative Identity Disorder. Multiple personalities. That's what she said at App Cafe when we fought like this. That was just her delusion. How could you know more about me than I knew myself? Mrs. Jo, do you still not know? You're still not aware of it? And do you think as long as you don't know, you're safe? I've warned you so many times. I want you to listen. And there's another personality inside you. Shogun. And that personality is doing terrible things. She's so close yet so far away to the truth. I can't let you keep doing this anymore. I can't let you keep killing people. You need to go to a hospital and get treatment. And if you refuse, I'm gonna turn you over to the police. And the crime is letting Shogun on feed. You're helping a murderer. Understand that. I can't understand that. I can't understand that. Can't you? I haven't killed anybody. I need you to understand that. I don't have multiple personalities. You must understand that. Multiple personalities only exist in manga and novels. I refuse to accept it. Buddy. Let's not get into that right now. Come out. I want you to talk. I want to talk to you. You hear me, right? Shogun. Shogun's not me. It's a real person. A different person. He uses a wheelchair and shows up at weird times. He's always reading my mind. And he's got a voice like a little kid and wrinkled skin like an old man. He's my enemy. He's not me. It's just the thought makes me sick. I... Uh... Wait. Didn't Kyo work for Shogun? I thought she did. But it looks she really thought I was Shogun. Nishijo, stop struggling. I need you to sleep for a while. And give your body over to Shogun. I can't do that! I don't have multiple personalities! I tried to tell her that, but with her hand over my mouth, all that came out were muffled moans. Show yourself. Come out. Come out, please. I can't come out. You should be able to come out. You want to come out, don't you? Come out, murderer. Talk to me, sound. 
I started to cry. My body went numb. I didn't have the strength to resist. I was just tired. Why? Why does all this stuff happen to happen to me? Why does she have to say all this crap to me? What did I ever do to you? This wasn't fair. This crazy delusional woman was stalking me. There's nobody here to save me. Was she going to kill me here? Even if I did make it through today, there's no guarantee I survive tomorrow. She could appear at any moment. Is it going to have to spend the rest of my life living in fear and jumping at shadows? Please no. I don't want to keep living this life. Maybe I'd be better off going crazy. I'd be better off dead. Why are you crying? She slowly took her hand off my mouth. She lifted her body off my chest. With the weight gone, I felt a lot better. Did Shogun come out? I shook my head limply. I'm so tired of all this. Just kill me. I won't kill you. I won't let you kill either. You must atone for your crimes. And you must tell everyone the truth. I won't let you escape from your crimes by dying. I won't let you. I can't let you. Shogun is someone else. He's the new gen killer. Shogun is you. It's you. It has to be you. Nothing I said was getting through to her. She was only interested in her own ideas. She was convinced they were completely right. They're partly right. There's no sense in resisting. Shogun, Shogun come out. Come out, please. I said come out. Why won't you come out? Okay. You up? Politely. Even if he did have the ID and Shokan truly was an altar of his. This isn't how you trigger out altars. <laughs> Not that you should trigger out altars, but this isn't how you do it. Okay? Jeez. It's complicated. Bleh. You know you're in there. I'm gonna draw out Shogun, I swear. I won't give up. And until then, I won't let you get away. <laughs> she could wait till he sneezes. <laughs> Suddenly, she stood up and closed the container's open door. She leaned over and picked up the padlock and locked it. Then she put the key in her uniform pocket. What was she doing? What was this girl thinking? I won't let you get away. She whispered coldly, as if she was talking to herself, not me. Now this is fun. There were a lot of fast food spots in Shibuya, but all of them were filled with young people. What does this have to do with anything? It took a lot of courage for a middle-aged man to come there alone. He felt out of place, like he didn't belong. You know, Bon thought these things to himself as he sat there, drinking his coffee, surrounding himself with groups of teenagers talking happily. The coffee in the paper cup was already cold. Damn. There was a clear plastic file on his table. Inside was the vast number of memos he'd taken, and a few copies he made of the official investigation reports. Of the latter, there weren't very much. He'd been here for an hour, alone, going over his notes again. As for why he was doing it in such a public place... Just the other day, he'd been taking off the new gen task force. He was still investigating it on his own. The copies he'd made, which of course were certainly not to be removed from the police building, had several images attached to them. The first images showed one of the victims of the group dive, the first new gen case, Mia Kusunoki. Well, I had taken an interest in her after speaking with her older sister, Yuba, yesterday. After what she said about Mia, he decided to look into her himself. Originally, he was so focused 
What? The blah, 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 blah. He was focused the rumors. Hmm, okay. It wasn't me, it was the English. He was focused on the rumors about the strange girl with the sword that were going around Shibuya. And this was only a secondary concern. But after going through all the documents, something felt strange. There were little things which, when viewed in isolation, were easy to miss. Maybe they didn't matter. Maybe they had nothing to do with the case. But when viewed as part of the whole, they just felt wrong. The feeling was especially strong after hearing what Yua had said yesterday. He looked at the document in front of him. It read, After the dive, glasses were found among Mio Kusunoki's possessions. That was what bothered him. He thought through all the things the task force had found during its investigations. He took a sip of his coffee inside. Not a single picture of Mia Kisunoki taken before she died showed her wearing glasses. It was always Yua, her older sister, who wore glasses. Yeah, the results of Mia's physicals too. They all showed her with a vision of 1.5 in both eyes. There was no reason at all for her to wear glasses. As someone with the vision of negative 1.5 in both eyes, X to doubt, because I also wear glasses. I mean, I guess since that would be like the opposite, so like far sighted rather than near sighted, it could be less of an issue. But still, whatever. Unlike her social butterfly of a sister, Mia Kusunoki was a quiet girl who liked anime. A match with what Yua Kusunoki had said about her. The kids who died in the group dive were all friends, but according to the information he had, they hadn't met in real life until the day they died. They were all internet friends who decided to meet up in real life. Of course, their internet conversations had all been tracked down and analyzed. There was nothing in them to indicate they were going to commit suicide. And several hours before the incident, two teenage girls, likely twins, had been entering a fast food place in Shibuya. <coughs> what is going on with my voice? It is struggling. Bon looked around, and the fast food restaurant where they'd been seen was this one. He talked to the witness, an employee here, just a little while ago. They talked for a while. Before they got into the bathroom together, they hadn't come out for ten minutes or so. What had they been doing in the bathroom? He stared at the girls' bathroom for a few moments before realizing that he probably looked like a weird old pervert to the kids around him. Yeah? He chuckled and went back to looking out the window. Hmm. 18 hours has passed since Yua had broken into my room. I was tied up to one of my bunk bed poles with my hands behind my back. Oh, okay. Kinky. <clears throat> Fortunately, I've been tied up sitting down, so it wasn't that tiring, but the cords were digging into my wrists. I've been more or less out of it for about three of the 18 hours. Only three of them? But since I hadn't been able to get any real sleep, I was having trouble keeping my eyes open. Damn it. I'm going to bondage, okay? Find somebody else to tie up. <laughs> Yuma was sitting on the sofa, staring at me. She had been there all night. All she did was sit there and glare at me. Didn't she get tired? What was the point of all this anyway? Yuma was convinced I had DID, but I didn't. No matter how long she waited, Shokun wasn't going to show up. After she tied me up, she'd given me a chance to talk. I'd use it to try and convince her. I'd spent hours on it, but she wasn't listening. She was so stubborn that after a few hours, I finally gave up. And then... You created Shogun. You are Shogun. Ah, a little backwards. There's a way for you to escape reality. 
将軍はあなたとしてい当時にあなたではない別の存在もう一人のあなたあなたの負の側面あなたの弱い心を守るためのの存在あなたの狂気快楽殺人者手段は選ばない<coughs> Jesus. He'll do anything. Kill anyone. Killing is the reason he exists. Could it just as easily have been someone else? Really? Why was Mia chosen? Answer me. Answer me. Please answer me. I want you to answer me. I won't let you not answer me. She kept whispering the same things over and over. She sounded crazy. It was a small room, and I couldn't put my hands over my ears either. I was forced to listen. I thought I'd go crazy myself. I tried to come up with a way to run. I tried telling her I needed to go to the bathroom and seeing if I could escape that way. But it didn't work. She untied me and let me go to the bathroom, but she didn't give me a moment's privacy. Even when I was using the toilet, she was watching me from right behind. And she was still whispering, too. How long was she going to keep this up? It was possible that she might decide to change her mind and just kill me at any minute. It wasn't safe for me to go to sleep. And of course, even awake, I didn't think I could protect myself. What's the trigger? What makes them appear? Physical pain? Mental pain? Sexual urges? Psychological trauma? Is it just a coincidence? And then, she suddenly fell silent. She was still staring at me, though. The room was dead silent. The silence just made me more nervous. Suddenly, I heard the sound of a rumbling belly. <laughs> I was hungry too, since I hadn't had anything to eat or drink, but it wasn't me. So Yo was hungry then. Of course, even though she must have known, I'd heard her stomach rumble. Her expression didn't change a bit. A normal girl, Sarah, for instance, would have reacted in a cute way. Like this, for instance. <clears throat> What? what? Don't blame me. I want some food, but I'm controlling myself. Huh? Why? Because... You said I'd gained weight the other day. But, but I'm not dieting because you said that, okay? Don't get the wrong idea, you dork. You know, like, it's really obvious soon today. You're so cute when you're blushing, Seda. Crap. Of course I wanted to escape into delusions with all that was going on. You're not going to eat? Yua opened her mouth. Her voice was as cold as ever. Her gaze was directed at my feet. There was a plate there. The plate had pasta on it. All like egg spaghetti. She'd even put some seaweed flakes on top of it. And had been there for two hours already, though. And the noodles were probably a squishy mess now. Yua had made it. She left the room, leaving me tied up without saying a word, and came back 30 minutes later with this pasta. She must have gone out of the building again to the supermarket, bought the ingredients, and cooked it outside my room. I couldn't understand why she'd made it herself. She could have just as easily bought pre-made something at the convenience store. There might be poison in it, I thought. That's why I hadn't touched it. That, and since I was tied up, I couldn't reach it anyway. I it. It was your stomach that had rumbled. I tried to make my voice sound as sarcastic as possible. I'm not trying to cause you physical pain. X to doubt? I'm just waiting for Shogun to appear. So, please eat. I need you to eat. 
So. Eat. How am I supposed to eat like this? Don't be ridiculous. Yua stood up and walked over to me, then crouched down right next to me. I looked away in fear, but part of me was hoping she decided to untie the ropes. She hadn't, though. Yua brought the plate towards me, and somehow managed to get the pasta, which had now lost all its moisture, wrapped around a fork. She brought the fork to my mouth. Dozo. Here. <coughs> Yeah, no. I'm not going to eat that. Normally, having girl feed you was an experience you could only find in an H game. I'm sure you could find it in other types of games too, buddy. Like dating sims that don't have H. But being fed by Yua right now was only making me want to kill somebody. If you want to feed me on time, he first, damn it. Then I could pretend to eat it and let's say, It's nasty and I don't want any more. Then she'd feel real bad, I bet. Should I heat it up in the microwave? I told you, I don't want it. I thought about using my knee to knock the plate out of her hands, but if I pissed her off, there's no telling what she might do to me. The idea scared the crap out of me and I gave up on it. Please, understand. I'm doing all this to save you. Uh -huh. I'm not doing this to hurt you. What? Was you just dumb? Was she literally stupid? Who the hell did she think she was anyway? Save me? Sure, I'd been afraid of the new gen murders in Shogun. I wanted someone to save me. But that list of somebodies did not include you, uh. I wasn't interested in playing along with the delusions of a crazy chick. Eat. Force herself to eat. Did you put the fork with the cold pasta wrapped around it up to my mouth? You can eat it, can't you? She drew her face closer to mine. She was staring into my eyes. Please eat. Eat. And then she froze. Why did this girl always get so close to me whenever she was mad about something? I pressed my lips into a thin line and looked away. Even the idea of eating anything this woman prepared for me was disgusting. <coughs> An hour or so passed. My stomach was hurting. Bad. I wanted to scream in terror, but I couldn't. Eat. Eat, please. I told you to eat. Eat. She was still right in front of my face, staring at me. She still had the fork with the pasta up against my lips. She'd been like that the whole time. Eat. Please eat. You need to eat. Eat. I want you to eat. Eat. You must eat. Eat. It's okay for you to eat. Eat, okay? Eat, damn it. She kept whispering over and over in a low voice. I feel like she'd been doing it for at least an hour. And the whole thing was so eerie that I couldn't move a finger. This must have been how a frog feels like when a snake is bearing down on it. She hadn't hurt me. She wasn't trying to force the pasta into my lips. But the terror I felt toward her was just growing more and more intense. All she was doing was waiting for me to eat. <coughs> <coughs> The reason it felt so creepy was that a normal person would have given up after five minutes. She'd been waiting over an hour. She just screamed, Eat the food already! and grabbed me by the hair and forced it into my mouth. At least that would have been normal. I couldn't tell what Yua was thinking. There was something very, very wrong with her. She was broken. She didn't even seem human. I was scared, 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 scared, I was scared. I was completely terrified. I wanted to just get on my knees and beg her to let me go. An awful sweat was forming over my whole body. The mental pressure was making it hard to even breathe. 
I never had a girl stare at me for this long, this distance, at anybody. I mean, if she was my girlfriend and we were having a nice romantic chat, that would be one thing. But all she was doing was staring at me with a blank expression and cold eyes and mumbling eat over and over. This wasn't something that normally happened to people. Eat. You must eat. Eat, please. Please eat. Eat, damn it. Ugh. I couldn't take her gaze anymore. I forced the words out of my mouth. They came out raspy and dry. I'll eat it. <coughs> Yua stopped whispering. She didn't move. She was still in the same exact position. <laughs> I forced my mouth open. Trembling. I ate the pasta I refused for over an hour. It was dry. And eating it stole what little moisture remained in my already dry mouth. I swallowed it without even really chewing it. I didn't have it in me to try and figure out how it tasted. Fair, I guess. After she saw me do it, Yua blinked several times. She had been frozen like a statue, and as she finally started to move... Oishi? Is it good? Of course not. I couldn't tell her that, though. We just nodded softly. <laughs> you got that I'm glad. And she didn't look happy at all, though. The blank expression remained plastered on her face. She lowered the fork toward the plate. She grabbed another dry lump of plas plasta. Hmm. She grabbed another dry lump of pasta with a fork and raised it to my mouth again. <clears throat> was I supposed to eat it all? Was she not going to let me go until I did? Please let me go. I started to cry. I was so scared. But no matter how much I cried, it looked like she was going to stay like this until all the pasta was eaten. So I cried, but I ate. I kept letting her feed me the dry, disgusting pasta. By the time I finished, I was mentally and physically exhausted. Are you full? Right. You are full, right? You should be full. I'm glad I worked so hard to make it for you. She spoke coldly, but finally moved away from me. She put the plate on my computer desk and returned to the sofa. Then she sat down and looked at me. Once again, she stopped moving completely. Please, don't look at me. Stop looking at me. I kept whispering in my heart. I was too scared to speak. Was she going to keep looking at me for a full 24 hours? It was mental torture. The idea made me feel miserable. Why are you doing this? I asked, sobbing. I had to ask. What did I do to you? My younger sister is dead. Huh? A sister? For just a moment, Yua looked like she was about to break into tears. But then the cold mask returned to her face. She was one of the victims in the group dive video. She was my twin sister. Her name was Mia. I'm going to make her murder pay. I told myself I had to make them pay. And then, I found you. I came to know your pain. I want to know why my sister had to die. I want to know why the killer, my shogun, chose to do what he did. And I want to save you too. Please, understand. You understand, right? You should understand. I know you understand. I remember the group dive video uploaded to YouTube. So, one of the victims screaming and crying in that video was her younger sister. After what had happened to Nanami, I could kind of understand how she felt. But that didn't mean I was sympathetic. She broke into my room and tied me to a post. Of course I couldn't sympathize with her. I completely lost track of how long I've been in here. 
There were no windows in this room, so I couldn't even tell what time it was now. What does Sue's eyes or those mean? Why did you make the people you were about to kill say it? Why did you make them leave it as a dying message? What are you trying to say? There's only... Blah, blah, blah. <coughs> the only way to tell inside the base was to look at my computer clock or my cell phone. Tied to the bedpost, I couldn't do either. When I went to the bathroom, I was able to go outside, so I could get a general idea of what time it was then. But as this dragged on, I started to get reluctant to even go to the bathroom. Without any water, I didn't have any urge to pee. I felt like I hadn't needed to use the toilet for at least a full day now. My Darth Spider. What are you trying to say by wearing that helmet? Does it have some religious meaning? Are you trying to make yourself out to be an anti-hero? Or is it your way of having fun at society's expense? Niwa barely moved. All she did was sit on the sofa. Occasionally, she would stand up for a little, or change how she sat, but nothing more. And the whole time, she kept whispering. It amazed me that she could talk so much. She didn't call or text anyone, or use the computer to kill time. She didn't sleep. All she did was ask me questions. The words themselves were starting to lose their meaning. I hated being stared at. Shogun's mind reading, at least, only happened once in a while. I hated it, but it, was un it wasn't unbearable. <clears throat> but having Yua watch my every action with her expressionless cold eyes... That felt like it was striking a fatal blow at the very core of who I was. As long as I was tied up here, unable to move, I couldn't see anything changing. I lost track of how long I'd been tied up. I had no idea how many days it had been. It felt like it might have been only two days, but also might have been a month. Not being able to move was really stressful. For the past several hours, I thought of nothing but how I wanted to see a clock. I couldn't think of anything else. Nor. Her head suddenly began to sway. She took off her glasses and rubbed her tired eyes. The effect of having no sleep at all was finally catching up with her. She was getting what she deserved for being so stupid. What she was doing was pointless. A waste of effort. If she just listened to what I was telling her, all of this would have happened. It's... When are you going to show yourself? Her whisper sounded so pained. Was she talking to Shogun? What do I have to do to make you show yourself? Come out, please. It's not coming. Sorry. It was never here in the first place. I'll be waiting. Wait. Her voice dropped off, and then her body began to tilt to the side. She slumped over onto the sofa and lay there, unmoving. Had she fallen asleep? Had she finally run out of steam? I sighed in relief as the tension left my body. I hadn't had a moment's relief while she was staring at me, but now I could finally get a little rest. Taki! Taki! Get a hold of yourself! <coughs> I heard Sadaton's voice coming from next to the PC monitor. This is your only chance to escape. How? He's tied up. In fact, this is your chance to tie her up. She's defenseless. And then, you can do whatever you want, dork. You see, I could, for example, not saying that, or make her endure all kinds of sexy punishments, perhaps. And trembling, I looked over at her face. Asleep, she was actually pretty cute. I remember the soft smile she'd shown me when we'd first met. Obviously, she had her reasons for thinking of me as her enemy. I thought she was working for Shogun, too. But she was the one who made me think that. She was the one who tricked me lie to me, so even if I, still not saying that, or made her endure all kinds of sexy punishments, 
She wouldn't have the right to complain. Yes, she would. I looked at her face again. Her eyelids were twitching. Her face was twisted in pain. Suddenly, a single tear fell from the corner of her eye. <sighs> Maybe she was dreaming about her dead sister. Taki, you're not going to make her endure sexy punishments? Sarah, shut up. I couldn't, after seeing her cry. Even though she locked you in here and tied you up? Taki, you're a saint. You're so nice. Too nice. That's one of the things I admire about you. But I think there's a time and place for it. No, it's not like that. Of course, I still couldn't forgive what she'd done, but somehow, my anger and my will to resist her were gone. Was it because I wasn't as nervous now that she wasn't staring at me? Or because I'd heard about what happened to her sister? Somehow, I felt like she wasn't actually going to hurt me. I felt incredibly sleepy. I decided to forget the pain in my arms from being tied up. I just give in to the sleepiness. I could figure out how to escape later. Fair, I guess. I woke up and felt something strange. Something was missing. That's how it felt. My eyes were still a little blurry as I looked around the room. When I tried to stand up, the cord stuck into my wrist, sending pain shooting through my arms. I remember that I was tied up, and it was the one who tied me up. I knew I wasn't here. That was what had felt so wrong. I was the only one here now. And weren't she gone? Did she make me... Blah, 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 blah. Did she go to make more food? Or to the bathroom? I had no idea how long ago you and I had been here, but neither she nor I had gone to school once during that time. Only times either of us left this room were either to cook or use the bathroom. I wasn't even allowed to take a shower. I let out a deep sigh. He was probably going to come back any minute now. And she'd go right back to watching me. Did Eva just have a really persistent personality? Or was it her anger and rage at her sister's death that was driving her to act so bizarrely? How could I get her to understand that I wasn't Shogun? Maybe I could show her the message I received from him on my PC. But Eva was completely overtaken with her own delusions right now. A single email wouldn't change her mind. I needed something more definitive to prove that Shogun and I were separate people. If Shogun were to show up in my room, that'd do it. Of course, that'd be a problem on its own. I didn't want to see Shogun ever again. If he was here, that'd mean he'd come to kill me. <laughs> hey, hey, Taki! <laughs> you should get out of here! I don't want to see that crazy stalker woman hurt you anymore. <laughs> And thank you, Sarah. I don't think I can untie myself, though. I tried a bunch of times, of course, but I'd failed. Nima had tied the knots tightly, and they weren't budging. If only I was 3D, I'd untie you right away. But it also felt like staying here was the right move anyway. Trying to run might make her mad. When she got mad, she was incredibly scary. I didn't want to do anything that might piss her off. You're thinking of the best way to keep yourself alive, huh? You're amazing, Taki. Does that make him amazing? I'm, I'm not sure about that one. For my part, I don't want to see her in the same room with you anymore. No one cares what you think, Seiro. I didn't either, but tied up like this, I just have to rely on her. Fortunately, she hadn't hurt me yet. And she was feeding me and even letting me use the bathroom. She was still treating me like a human being. And as soon as she figured out that Shogun wasn't going to show up, she'd let me go. She'd probably apologize, actually. And when that happened, I did make her get on her knees and beg for forgiveness, of course. I'd also make her let me touch her boobs or something, too. Priorities, buddy. Then we call it even. You will never appear in front of me again. And I'd never go to see her again, either. If nothing else, she'd cease to be a threat. And if I was lucky, maybe I could even bring her over to my side. 
The real Shogun was still lurking out there. If I was really lucky, I could get Yua to protect me from him. And she hated the person behind the new gen killings. The enemy of my enemy was my friend. She and I wanted the same thing. <laughs> I'm really smart, <laughs> aren't I? I'm a genius. No, you're not. Yep, you're a genius, Taki. I'm more in love with you than ever. Yeah, the smart move now was just to hang in there. Okay. She sure was late, though. There was still no sign of her. Quite a lot of time had passed. Several hours, at least. Probably several hours, anyway. Where had she gone? It wasn't to the bathroom, if nothing else. But she'd been gone far too long for her shopping trip. She made several trips to the store to get food, and this was far longer than any of them. So where had she gone? School? I don't know what time it was, but if it was daytime, she could easily have gone to school. And if I could look at my schedule, I would at least know what day it was. Say, for example, that she locked me up three days ago, and the first day was a Friday. In that case, the last two days would have been the weekend, and it would make sense that she hadn't gone to school. In that case, today would be Monday, then, and she would have left for school. That's right, yeah, it has to be. What day had it been when she'd broken in here? My mind was all hazy, and I couldn't think straight. What if it wasn't school, though? Like, maybe she'd gone home. I could see some dumb, slutty teenager sleeping over somewhere without telling her parents, but you wouldn't look like that type. Maybe she made up a lie or something to get their permission to not come home. But even so, after several days, I'd probably start to worry. So maybe she decided to head back home to reassure them. That theory made sense. Either way, she was sure to come back. My best move was probably to save my energy, to not move. I took a small deep breath and closed my eyes. Time to take a nap. I couldn't sleep. I closed my eyes and tried to sleep for several hours, but got nowhere. I kept looking at the door to see if you would come back. Occasionally, the door would shake a little when there was a particularly strong gust of wind, and look up at it, hoping that Yua had come back. There was still no sign of her at all, though. I was tied up and alone here in my shipping crate. She was so late that I decided to see if I could break my bonds. I was bound to the bedpost by nylon cords. If I struggled hard enough, I might be able to break them. I yanked my arms forward hard. <laughs> <laughs> no good, and they weren't budging. Maybe I was just weak. Of course, I was a wimpy otaku kid. I spent all my time on the computer playing video games or reading than that. I wasn't going to be able to pull off any Hollywood heroics. I wasn't going to be able to break through them by force. I tried to think of another way. If I had a knife, or something like a knife, that might do it. But there's nothing like that anywhere. All I could see were magazines, or manga, or CDs, or discarded containers of food from the convenience store. I made that. No good. <coughs> I was such a loser, I couldn't even cut an nylon cord on my own. You are he was going to come back, right? I whispered aloud, as if trying to convince myself. Hey, hey, Taki. Do you think maybe she just abandoned you? Uh, abandoned me? You mean she just left me here? She wasn't coming back? I needed her to come back. Badly. I was helpless tied up here on my own. If she was going to tie me up, she at least had to take responsibility for keeping me alive, right? I was overthinking things. She hadn't abandoned me. She would come back. She hadn't found out who was Shogun yet. She wouldn't give up this soon. You wouldn't abandon me. I'd be just fine. Don't you know? They call that Stockholm Syndrome. 
Of course, I knew what the furries meant. But this wasn't that. I didn't have Stockholm Syndrome. I wasn't dependent on her in any way. Uh-huh. I didn't feel close to that crazy bitch in the slightest. Weren't you thinking to yourself, after what had happened to Nanami, could kind of understand how she felt? <laughs> was I lying to myself? Was I trying to force myself to think that Yua was safe to be around? <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome is rather notably complete BS, but also, dude, yeah. Maybe I, I was. Stockholm Syndrome involved your mind lying to itself to keep you safe. Oh boy, a definition. A term used in psychology. During a hostage situation, hostages find themselves locked inside an enclosed space with their captor for hours or days at a time. In these cases, victims will sometimes report feeling love, rather than hatred, for the people who imprison them. These cases are referred to as Stockholm Syndrome. One theory states that this occurs because of building a relationship of trust rather than resisting results in a higher survival rate, and the brain deceives itself to allow that to happen. The name comes from a hostage case that occurred in Stockholm in 1973. I didn't know that. That's interesting. <clears throat> yeah, whenever read the exam results, um, your delusion level is, to be blunt, zero. Your personality may be, if anything, a little too realistic, but your real life is a fulfilling one, with lots of friends in a big social circle. You've had many romantic partners, and your work of or schooling is going extremely well. You've never needed to have delusions about anything. Why, a person like you would decide to play a game like this is a mystery. <laughs> Please continue to live a happy, optimistic life in the 3D world. Many fun things are waiting for you there. Oh boy, a comment for me, Simi. If you see somebody lost in their own delusions with a dorky grin on their face, make sure you don't call them a creep. Be nice to them, actually. Then all the girls will think you're a nice guy. <laughs> oh dear. I'm glad I took the time to read that, actually. Uh, okay, before I continue on with this, I'm gonna get new beverage because I finished drinking mine. And my voice is struggling. Screams. I'll be right back, though. I was wondering what part made you laugh like crazy over there. But yeah, that, that was a very Misumi addition to that. <coughs> I don't remember if I read this, I'll reread it just to be sure though. Maybe it was. Stockholm Syndrome involved your mind lying to itself to keep you safe. But so what if I was lying to myself? In this situation, I didn't have any choice but to rely on Yua. Rumi had ditched me, and there were no sign of Nanami lately. Either. My parents were, according to Nanami, worried about me. But they hadn't actually come to see me. Not even once. The only other person who I knew lived up here was Yua. Yua was the only one I could rely on anymore. If it was a lie, it was a necessary one. One I needed to keep me alive. I didn't want to die, and I didn't want to Yua to hurt me, but I didn't have the courage to fight back with force. I'd have to cling to her for help. It was my only option. I had to keep being defenseless up until she understood that I wasn't a threat. It was the only way for a helpless loser like me to survive. 
I would believe in Yua, and believing in her meant wanting to myself. That was what it would have to take me to get out of the blah 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 blah. <sighs> and that was what it would take to get me out of this safely. You can't believe in that crazy glasses girl. Taki, you're being stupid. <sighs> Sorry, Sarataton. This is the one time I can't listen to what you have to say. I'm sure there's plenty of other times, but that's okay. So please, come back soon, Yua. You'll come back, right? It happened out of nowhere. The door suddenly flung open, with no warning. I flinched away from the sudden sound. I could see the sky outside was turning to the color of evening. Yua came inside, placing herself between me and the twilight. I felt so relieved when I saw her. Knowing that she hadn't abandoned me made me so happy, I thought I might cry. I hate myself for being so weak, but the sense of relief was far stronger than the hate. <laughs> okay. Welcome back. You was all I had, so I said it, even though I knew how stupid it sounded. But... You're in the way. Huh? Yua strode over to me, crouched down to my left and grabbed my hair. She pulled hard. You're in the way. If you weren't here, Shogun would appear. <coughs> Why are you here? Go away. Disappear for a little while. Talking to you is a waste of time. I don't want to talk to you. Bring him out. Bring out Shogun. Something was wrong with you, huh? Was she starting to run out of patience? Was it because Shogun was nowhere to be found? Was she about to resort to more forceful measures? This isn't what I expected at all. I believed in her. I believed she wasn't going to hurt me. Was she going to betray me again? I was the only one who thought there was betrayal going on here. I realized the truth. I've been trusting her for no reason. You had never asked me to trust her at all. Was I just being naive? Because I wasn't a talker and a loser? Because I wasn't used to dealing with people in the real world? I deserved to be deceived? Well, that was true. Then I didn't need a 3D world at all. I'd rather stay in the 2D world forever. Look. She stuffed something in front of my face. It looked like a notebook. My little sister's diary. I went home to get it. You should read it and know what it says. Even before the group died, my sister Mia was being targeted by you. No, by Shogun. Before. He was stalking her. The purpose of the group dive wasn't to kill five people. The others were just an extra. The only target was Mia. I'm right, aren't I? Aren't I, Shogun? Answer me. Come out and answer me. Nima's voice was gradually becoming more and more hysterical. My heart was pounding with fear. I was shaking. No matter what happened, I could admit that she was right. All of this was her delusion. She was making it all up. And I never even met her little sister. I tried to shake my head, but the pain from her pulling my hair made it so I couldn't. Am I still not trying to come out? Her face got closer and closer. She whispered in my ear. And then she brought the diary up to eye level. Look. See? Mia's pain. Is that why it says Yuva's diary? Oh dear. She forced my head upwards. She flipped through the pages with her free hand. And when I saw what was written there, I froze. What the hell was this? What was this? The last page of her diary. The last thing she ever wrote. Whose eyes are those? 
on the day. September 6th. The day before she died and the group died. Shogun! He, he was reading my mind! What do you mean, reading your mind? That's not true, is it? No. He was stalking her. Shogun was stalking her. You were stalking her. <laughs> not Shogun! Shogun is inside you. I keep telling you! Shogun is somebody else! Shogun is talking to Nishijo. Don't try to talk your way out of this. Whose eyes are those? That was what you wrote in your essay years ago. That's proof. There's other circumstantial evidence, too. You're the only person I can think of who it could be. The only person. It has to be you. He killed my sister. No, you don't sleepwalk. I don't have the ID. Shogun is somebody else. He's not me. He's somebody else. What do you think? What do you think? Now that you've seen this diary. Are you happy? Now that you pushed her to the brink of insanity? Killed her? Are you happy now that you drove her crazy? So crazy she wrote all of this in her diary? And why did he do this to Mia? And why did he kill Mia? Why? Talk to myself. You are... You're wrong. You're wrong about everything. You're the one that's wrong. You killed people. You killed them. Murder. But... This is... Your diary. You are... What? You all looked confused. But I'd clearly seen it. Just a moment ago, with the words on the cover. And I read Yua's diary. I thought maybe it had been mistaken or something, but you had just clearly said whose diary this was. My little sister's diary. Then why didn't the letters on the cover say Mia's diary? This is your diary. It says so on the cover. What are you talking about? She didn't even look at it. This is Mia's diary. My dad's sister Mia's diary. Mia, the girl you killed. Her diary. It's Mia's. Mia wrote it. Mia wrote it before she died. Then look at the cover. You would close the notebook and look down at it, unconcerned. Then she turned back to me. This is Mia's diary. Huh? You saw it. I just saw you looking at it. I saw you looking at the words Yua's diary. So why? Mia wrote it. Did he try to lie to me? He can't trick me. I lived with Mia for my whole life. We were together our whole lives. I know much more about Mia than you do. I know her. Can't you see it? Look, it says it right there. This is your diary. And Yua suddenly put her hands up to her temples. Her expression was twisted in pain. No, it wasn't me who wrote this. It was Mia. What the? Me. She? There's no way you could know. 
you have DID. DID. Dissociative identity complex. disorder. Multiple personalities. Who are you? I am you. I am you. Was she the one with the DID? Not me. I definitely thought that earlier. Is Mia Kusunoki even real? Do the police even publish the names of the victims in the group dive? All the victims were underage. Don't they usually try to keep the names of underage victims out of the media? Or maybe... Do you even have a younger sister? Maybe Mia Kusunoki was real. But maybe Mia Kusunoki wasn't actually Yuba Kusunoki's twin. Maybe they both had really similar names. But they were completely different people. I do! Yuba suddenly started to strangle me. Her fingers were thin and frail. But her strength was incredible. I couldn't breathe. I did! Mia was my sister. I remember her clearly. Can, can you prove it? You were relaxed her fingers. Can you prove you don't have the idea? Can you prove you don't have the idea in general? Let's not think about this right now. Can you prove you're not Mia Kusunoki? I couldn't. I've only been able to be sure that I wasn't Shogun when the real Shogun had shown up in front of me. I can. Mia's hand moved away from my throat. She threw down the notebook. Mia had a more. She began to take off her top. Uh. Below her left breast, there was a mole there. A mole that I didn't have. Slowly, fumblingly, she began to undo the buttons one by one. She took off her bra too. She hit her large chest with her hands. She tried to look uh, under her left breast. I looked too. And I could see that there was a mole there. It's there. It's there. Why? I'm not supposed to have a mole there. Who am I? Her face was pale and her lips were shaking. Her vision was darting around her. She wrapped her arms around her body, her top still exposed. I'm Iwa. I was always the good girl. Mia was always the bad girl. I always wanted to be the good girl. Mia always loved Yua. Yua was always worried about Mia. I don't think she was saying it any sense. I shivered. But I didn't feel like running away and leaving her alone. I knew what she was going through. I'd experienced the exact same thing myself, quite recently. Ever since Iwa had told me I had the idea, my whole life had felt unstable. So, I understood. I knew how it felt to have your whole identity come crashing down around you. I didn't know if it was the idea or something else. But there was something wrong with Iwa. There had been for a long time. Her personality changed too drastically from one moment to the next for it to be an act. I remember thinking that the gap between when she'd first spoken to me and when she'd snapped had been way too big for them to be the same person. You are. What? You are. What do you, you have DID? No. She was real. She was real. Mia was my sister. Yua reached into her jacket pocket, still covering her chest with one hand. She took out her phone and pulled something up for me to see. Look. She's right here, right? We're right here, right? 
Oh, nah. She was. There were two of them. It didn't look like it could have been digitally altered. You could tell they were twins. They looked almost exactly alike. The only difference was the glasses. Even their hairstyles were the same. I'm here. I'm right here. Which are you? I'm... She pointed. To the left. And then the floor began to violently shake. An earthquake? It was bigger than the last one. There was a violent ringing in my ears. A high-pitched sound that threatened to split open my head. Yua covered her head with her hands and curled up into a ball. I wanted to do the same, but I couldn't move my hands. It was like thousands of tiny needles being stabbed into my ears. And then... With a terrible impact, my vision turned away. We switched places that day. And there were a lot of students in Shibuya McDee's that night. The girls were talking and having fun, and occasionally breaking into high-pitched laughter. I took a look outside the window, and then got out my phone. September 7th, 5.02pm. She was two minutes late. I felt a little annoyed as I took a bite of my chicken sandwich. Sorry, Mia. Did you wait long? Yuba appeared holding a tray in one hand. She sat across from me and took a small deep breath. Yeah, I did. And jeez, I wasn't even five minutes late. Oh, you got a chicken sandwich? Me too. She pointed to the chicken sandwich on her tray. We were twins, so of course. Her tastes were pretty much the same. She didn't need to point it out every time, but still, she looked happy. This is the first time we've ever hung out like this in Shibuya, huh? My school wasn't in Shibuya, and I could always see her at home. I never had a reason to come to Shibuya after school to see her. So what did you want me to do? I'll do anything I can. I finished my chicken sandwich and took a gulp of my iced tea before leaning toward her. You see, I'm about to go meet some people. A boyfriend? Not like that. People I've never met before. How many? Four, I guess. Where do you know them from? We met online. It's nothing weird though. And there's this site that's kind of like an anime fan site. We met there. Huh? I never use the internet, so I don't really know how that works. Is it common to meet up with people like that? Yeah, kind of. But I've never done it before. And you're pretty shy, Mia. I'm not shy. I just have trouble getting along with people. <laughs> sure, if you say so. So are you going to be okay? Do you think you can talk to them even though it's your first time meeting them? I was planning on it, but now... You got cold feet. I just don't feel like bothering, that's all. But I don't want to just bail on them with no notice, so... You want me to go in your place, huh? I knew I was sharp. She usually knew what I was going to say before I said it. Sometimes she could get on my nerves that way. But today, I was happy that I didn't need to explain anything to her. Yeah. Can you help me out? Sure. But are you sure about this? This is a chance to make some friends. <laughs> don't treat me like a little girl. I don't need friends. Aww, you can be so stubborn sometimes. Will you do it? Yeah, sure. You want me to be a perfect double of Mia Kusunoki, right? 
You don't need to do go that far. If we're going to do it, I'll be more fun to go all the way. You know, lots of uniforms. Why are you so excited? You never asked me to do anything for you, so I'm happy. Yua, you look kind of stupid. Well, I may be stupid, but I'm still your big sister. Come on, well, let's go change. Yua grabbed my hand. And pulled me into a bathroom stall, where we switched everything we owned. Mia, you look good in that Suyame uniform. I don't think even mom or dad could tell us apart. Oh, but with the glasses, it's obvious I can just take them off or... No. I don't think I can. I won't be able to see a thing. I've never met these people before. You didn't have to go this far. No, are you still saying that? It's almost time for the meetup, right? Let's go over the plan with the rest of the time we got. I don't know anything about anime. What am I supposed to talk about? I'm just playing along with whatever they say. I'm never going to see any of these people again. That's not true. You might make some friends, right? You might even get a boyfriend. I don't want one. Liar. If you didn't, you wouldn't have wanted to meet up with these people in the first place. What if she wants a girlfriend, you are? Shut up. I'll do my best to make them all think that Mia Kisunoki is a very good girl. Please, don't. I'll only make it harder to meet them a second time. I wasn't as social as you was. All right, off I go. Thanks. Really. Don't take it too far. Right, right. <laughs> Hi, Mia. You would give me a happy wave. She was wearing my uniform. Here in my bag. None. She disappeared into the Shibuya crowds. That was the last time I saw her. I went home and waited for her. Until I saw what happened on the news. Uh. I woke up with a splitting headache. The bed had fallen on top of me, I realized. I wasn't just feeling the pain from the headache. The weight of the bed pressing onto my back. I couldn't move my head, so I moved my eyes to look around the room. <sighs> Nyo was slumped up against the wall. She'd been half naked before the quake, but now she put her clothes on, from the look of it. It was strange to see her without her glasses. Her glasses had fallen at my feet. The ones says had broken. <laughs> oh, just <Dusky>. me. <laughs> It's me. I called out to her, trying to fight the pain in my head. She looked at me with empty eyes. I remember now. I didn't really care what she remembered, though. Just untie me. I can't move with this thing on top of me. I remember. She slowly stood up. She wasn't wearing her glasses, but even in the darkness, she could see clearly enough to untie the knots holding me. Finally free, I managed to crawl out from under the bed. But that was all I could do. Just like the last earthquake, this one had left me with a splitting headache. It hurt too much to even stand. I was forced to crawl on the ground in pain. It was Yua. She was whispering something to herself again. It wasn't me that died in the crowd dive. It was Yua. 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 What are you? I'm not Yua. She laughed. I'm Mia. I just convinced myself I was Yua. We switched places that day. 
And you had died. Actually, though, I was the one that was supposed to die. Suddenly, an expression disappeared from her face. Her eyes were still empty. She offered me a hand. Nishijo. I don't care about Shogun anymore. In the end, I'm the one that I want you to come with me. Where? To the place where you had died. All you have to do is come. Please. Please. And then I understood. You went, no, Mia, was planning to die. I wasn't sure if I should try to stop her, but I realized nothing I said would make a difference. So I took her hand, and with her help, tried to stand up. There was a stabbing pain in my head. It felt like my vision was turning read. <laughs> <laughs> Red as in the color is what was supposed to be there. I could feel the sound of the blood pumping through my head. Kathud, kathud. It hurt too much to move. Can you walk? Mia wrapped her arms around me to support me. I need you to walk. I want you to come with me. It would help me so much. Please. With her help, I managed to head toward Shibuya Station. Shibuya was now a city of death. There were bodies everywhere. Some were covered in blood. Uh. Some had severed limbs. Some had crushed heads. It was a scene out of a nightmare. There was nothing remaining of the brightly lit city I knew. Only death and ash and despair. Or there were huge cracks in the asphalt roads. And the streets could have caved in at any time. Huge chunks of concrete had fallen off the buildings and were blocking the roads, making it impossible to travel in a straight line. But me and I kept walking, oblivious to the cries for help around us. We went toward the huge figure of the Cornelius Tower in the distance. The tower was mostly undamaged. Parts of the exterior were crumbling, but I had survived the earthquake and was still standing straight. As near as I could tell from the outside, all the lights were off. Maybe everybody had it already evacuated and was empty. As expected, there was no one in the lobby, no electricity. The elevators weren't working. We were forced to use the emergency stairs instead. Cornelia's tower had 41 stories. It was 184 meters tall. I learned those two bits of trivia while researching the group dive case online. It was crazy to try and climb up all of the stairs, especially since I could barely walk with this headache. But with U.S. help, I managed to start climbing the stairs, but one at a time as the one at a time as the sweat poured down my body. I think when I started telling everyone I was Yua, my mom and dad decided to play along. Maybe they decided to treat me as Yua and tell everyone that Mia was dead. Mia was talking to herself. I just listened. No, maybe I didn't even need to listen. I felt like she wasn't talking so that I could hear her. And that's always how it was. I was always the little brat. My parents always tried to avoid me. And the way they treated Mia as a dead girl. Maybe they wanted Mia dead instead of Yua. But still, it's all my fault. My fault for convincing myself I was Yua. I should die. Just like she died. What was Yua like? 
I always looked up to her. I was jealous of her. Sometimes she made me mad, but I didn't hate her. If anything, I loved her. I loved Yua. She was the one person who really understood me. As long as Yua was happy, I was happy. No matter how hard things got for me. And she was always worried about me. I felt so bad for making her worry that sometimes I would be mean to her. But she was always so kind. She wept silently as she walked up the stairs. Were they tears of regret, of sorrow, of guilt? And I couldn't tell. And the wind up on the heliport was stronger than I thought. You had a 360 degree view of the Shibuya night sky up here, but there was no beauty to be seen, only darkness. I could just barely make out Tokyo Tower and Roppongi Bills in the distance. Below us, the city of Shibuya was dead silent. There was almost no light. The darkness hid the shattered remains of the city. It was daytime. I might have been astonished at the sight below me. Nishijo. Would you... Mia let go of me. I collapsed right to the ground. Would you... Jump with me? She was staring down into the distance. Her hair was blowing to the wind and hiding her expression. I couldn't see the look on her face. I know that she'd come here to jump. She was going to follow after her sister. I knew exactly what my answer was. Oh no. I don't want to die. Why would I want to commit suicide along with the girl who tied me up? I thought you'd say that. She started to walk toward the edge of the heliport, staggering occasionally in the strong wind. No, oh, right. That Sarah figure you and I went to in reserved. And she suddenly stopped and turned around. I did end up buying it. It was very cute. Very sexy. I really liked it. It's on my desk in my room. Her smile was frail. She... Blah, 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 blah. Why was she telling me this now? I don't care what you tell me. I'm not giving you any sympathy. You don't want sympathy. Goodbye. Nishijo. I'm the man who killed me. I'm going to be with you, Anna. Everything Nishijo said made perfect sense. It was strange, but what I felt was loneliness. A sad ache in the bottom of my heart. In the end, I was never able to prove for myself that he was Shogun. Maybe he was right, and I was wrong. Either way, there was no point in hating him anymore. If I hadn't asked Yua to take my place at the meetup, she wouldn't have died. She shouldn't have been the one to die. She was smart, pretty. She had lots of friends. Her parents loved her. But she died. Miwa Kusunoki had died. And at the same time, Miwa Kusunoki had disappeared. She became like a ghost. That was the choice I had made. I didn't know if I was alive or dead anymore. Miwa was gone too. I'd be better off dead. I stood on the edge of the heliport. This is where you and the other four had left to their deaths. I looked down and suddenly felt dizzy. There was barely any light below me, but still, I could feel just how high up I was. How had Yua felt when she jumped from this height? Was she scared? I'm sorry for making you scared. I'm going to be with you now. I'm going to suffer the same pain that you suffered. The pain I was supposed to suffer. I took a deep breath. My heart was at peace. I wasn't afraid to die. 
I spread out my hands like wings, closed my eyes. I stepped out into the empty air. The ground beneath me vanished. I fell. The world turned upside down. There was nothing left to hold me back. I was falling, but it felt like my body was rising. I could hear the roar of the wind. The ground was getting closer. I could see the asphalt below me, where Yua had hit the ground, where she'd landed, where every bone in her body had shattered, where her organs had exploded, her blood and brain matter had scattered everywhere. I don't want to die. Just a few moments ago, I thought I wasn't scared of death at all. Now I couldn't move. I felt terrified. I don't want to die. You had died, but I still wanted to live. My survival instincts took over from me completely. I screamed. The scream came up from the bottom of my heart. I reached out frantically to the rapidly receding night sky. I knew that nobody was going to grab it. But still, I reached out. I wished. I kept screaming. I don't want to die. But nobody heard my cry. Nobody was there to offer me a hand. The ground is right there. Yeah! No. <laughs> I could feel the sensation of every bone in my body shattering, but it quickly disappeared. I found myself back on the roof of the Cornelius Tower once more. Nishijo was right in front of me. He wasn't looking at me, but he was offering me a hand. <laughs> How? I jumped. I jumped and fell 180 meters, smashing my body against the ground. I stared at his hand, too stunned to even wipe away my tears. <laughs> Are you satisfied? His voice was cold. It, I can't have you dying on me. It, it would be like I pushed you, right? I don't want people to think I'm a murderer. I, I jumped. Maybe it was just a delusion? Delusion. I couldn't believe a delusion could have pain and sensations that felt so real. Um, Nishijo. Yua suffered like that when she died, right? But I... I tried to suffer the same pain she did, but I... I didn't want to die. I was the one who was supposed to die, but I didn't want to. You can't jump like that again. After knowing that pain, I'm too scared. What do I do? You just died right now when you jumped. Huh? You, you know the pain you all went through. It, isn't that enough? From now on, you can start over as Mia Kusunoki. For you were sick too. Thank you. Thank you. I reached out and took his hand. It was so very, very warm. I could feel the warmth of his body through his skin. The warmth made me stop shivering. That was honestly kind of cute. That was a kind of cute ending. Um, damn, that was a lot. Um, hmm. 
a lot of questions got answered. So I think that might be a common pattern for the other routes that like any questions there are about any of the other girls will be answered. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. I don't know, what thoughts do you guys have? Moon and sun end. Yay. Hmm. Well, next time we do Chaos Head, um, we'll be getting Ayase's route, which is Fess. So that will be interesting. That'll be very interesting. Fess is special. We we can put it that way. Um I would have said that for sure next week we'd be doing this, but it, it kinda really depends on um how Subathon goes. Because I'm starting with 48 hours in the clock, but who knows how long that will go. If a course goes through to Saturday, I'll of course do Chaos Head, no issue. But uh, we'll just have to see what happens. Whatever happens, happens. I guess is kind of my attitude with Subathon. Um, to add, to be honest. kind of wrapped itself up pretty well, to be honest. Um, Just go ahead and raid Izomi. They're just chatting up past my bedtime tihi. Santa Claus isn't something something. Yeah, um... Tomorrow we'll be continuing Data Live. M more or less normal week. It would have been more normal if... Peachy wasn't unwell on Thursday, but you know, say la vie. Um, but yeah, data live tomorrow. Hopefully, my voice will be more consistent tomorrow. I know my voice was struggling today, so that leaves me a little concerned for tomorrow, but that's. Uh, it'll be fine. Um, and then Monday, usual naps. Then Tuesday, off. Wednesday, subathon start. It's so soon! Scream. Um. 
But yeah, I'll, I'll catch you all next time whenever you guys are able to join me again. Thank you for joining, as always. Until next time. Bye-bye. Or wait. Wait. I have a raid message that I just never showed you guys here. Yeah, that. You can just yoink that, copy that, and now we have a raid message. I just keep forgetting that I did that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now your raid is on me. Let's go.